This video is going to review some of your function work from grade 11. So we're going to look at function notation, whether it's a function, and looking at stating the domain and range. Okay, so here we have a bunch of different relations given in different forms. So the first one we're going to look at is a table of values. Okay, and if you recall, the domain is all of the x values. So the domain... This one is just ordered pairs, basically, so we just list the points in numerical order in those squiggly set brackets. And for our range is the set of all of our y values, so our range, again, we're ordered pairs, so it's not between certain values, it's just certain values, and it's just one and three, so this one's here to remind you that you wouldn't repeat them twice, you would just put them once in it. Okay, and is this a function? So here, each value of x has only one value for y, so we say that this one is a function, okay? And that's just by looking at the ordered pairs. We'll talk about visually um, the vertical line test. I'll remind you about that in just a minute. Of course, if these are ordered pairs, you could roughly plot them just to get a visual for that if, if you like to look at things visual. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video. Do this next one that's a set of ordered pairs. It's very similar to the table of values, so I'd like you to take a minute, pause it, and try it yourself. Okay, so there's my domain and range for this one, and this one is not a function because the x value 2 has two different y values. So let's go ahead and look at some graphs. Okay, so here we have some sort of a trig function, right? You can tell it's a periodic, and just by looking at it, you know that it passes the vertical line test. So you can draw a vertical line anywhere, and it will only pass through one point, so that means, yes, it is a function. Okay, and we know for the domain, we're looking horizontally, we're looking at the x's. We know that this function continues on forever in both, uh, on both ends, and so we know that the domain for this is all real numbers. And for the range, we see that the lowest values are negative 3, the highest values are 1, and so we write the range like this. y such that it's between negative 3 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 1. So make sure we've got those arrows and you can get that idea down pat, comma, all real numbers. Okay, now I have been told before that some people write the Y-E-R at the beginning, and that's totally fine as long as you have some form of proper notation there. I've always put it at the end, but you're welcome to put it at the beginning if that's what you are used to. Okay, next we'll look at this linear function. Hopefully you can see that this is the line that I'm talking about right here. Okay, clearly you can see that, yes, this one is a function. Again, it continues on in both directions, and so the domain is all real numbers. And for the range, there's only one value, right? And so often we would write this one as y equals 3. Okay, y is just 3. That's it. So again, try pausing the video and see if you can do the quadratic and the circle by yourself and then come back and check your answers. Okay, yes, it's a function, all real numbers. Again, this is a quadratic, you know, that continues on forever downwards and um, in both directions, left and right. And the range, this one has a max up here, and so the range is less than 2. Okay, go ahead, try the circle. And hopefully that one makes sense to you. Not a function. Um, the domain is from negative 2 to 2. The range is from negative 2 to 2 as well. Okay, and pay particular attention to those arrows and arrows and make sure that you have that idea down pat. So there's a whole page of those that you're going to try and practice. Okay, and the last thing that I want to just remind you of is the idea of evaluating functions and function notation. So when I ask you to find f at negative 1 for f of x equals this quadratic, negative 3x squared plus 2x minus 1, I would expect that, of course, you know that that means we are going to find f at negative 1, and that means you're going to sub negative 1 in all the places that you see an x, and go ahead and evaluate that. Okay, so pause the video, do that on your own, and of course you should get negative 6. Okay, so following that idea, I want you to read number two and see if you would know what to do there. It's a little bit different. If f of x equals negative 3x plus 5, so that's linear, that's a line, find x 
if f of x equals negative 22. Always a good time. Pause the video, see if you can take a guess on what you need to do, and then check it out. Okay, so hopefully you figured out that f of x was negative 22, and here we're going to solve for x. Go ahead and do that. Okay, and hopefully you got x equals 9. Okay, so you're going to do a little bit of practicing with functions. Good luck.